Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Painter, in July 2021, before the cancellation of the Twin Metals leases, uh, senior DOI officials met off the books with the Wilderness Society, one of the lead plaintiffs in the lawsuit against the project, and they concealed the purpose of the meeting. Later, Interior canceled the leases despite ongoing litigation. Last year, you testified before the Senate Budget Committee and in written testimony, cri testimony criticized the fossil fuel industry for having backdoor access to federal governments, stating fossil fuel companies also take advantage of the revolving door in and out of government. They, there, there, they are allowed to participate in regulatory matters that affect their former employer's industry. With your condemnation of the fossil fuel industry allegedly using backdoor, backroom channels of political appointments and relationships to influence policy, do you similarly condemn the Wilderness Society for using backroom tactics to lobby against the Twin Metals mining project? My uh, understanding of the law is that these backroom uh, conversations with previous employers uh, have been allowed for a long time with respect to regulatory matters. The ethics pledge constrains some of that, not enough. We need to see a tightening up of the ethics rules. This was a serious problem under the Bush administration. It was a serious problem under the Clinton, the Reagan administration. It is a problem today. So that means you are, you are similarly condemning the I, I will condemn the legal, the legal communications. These, this is legal unless, and I will tell you where it is illegal. It is illegal when there is a communication between a federal official and their former employer about a so particular me, party matter within. Let me, let me go, that leads in. Do you believe that uh, nonprofits like the Wilderness Society should be allowed to guide natural resource policy instead of the professionals at uh, Bureau of Land Management? I don't understand your question. Should they be giving their input? Yes, they should. They should be doing it legally. Yeah, but I believe the rules need to be tightened up for the Wilderness Society as well as for the oil and gas industry. We've had too much of this revolving door access to what the do you interior believe? department. Do you, do you believe it's uh, a, a more appropriate working relationship between nonprofits and the federal government than we have observed here? Do you think there's more? I, I, I believe that the federal government needs to tighten up their ethics rules so we do not have federal officials discussing regulations with their previous employer. Whether the previous employer is the oil and gas industry or the wilderness society, there's been way too much of that. We need tighter regulations. That's the point I made in front of the June, United States Senate last June year and I'm 9th, making today. June 9, 2019, you tweeted, sulfide mining companies controlled by foreign billionaires descend on the Great Lakes at real Donald Trump and his allies and Minnesota's most corrupt DFL politicians show them, have shown them the way. Vote for clean water, vote them out. With your stated opposition to foreign billionaires influencing our natural resources policy, will you condemn all initiatives and projects that are funded by the Hans Schorn Weiss, a foreign national who funds environmental groups such as the League of Conservation Voters Action Fund as being influenced by foreign billionaires? I don't like foreign billionaires involved in American nonprofits at all. I have uh, condemned the influence of American universities from Qatar and other countries that seek to drive our universities toward anti-Semitism. So this is a serious a, problem. A yes. I do condemn it. But it's your job in Congress to take action, to pass laws, rather than play partisan games, attacking the other party, and simply trying to win an Mr. election and then two more I'm, years I'm of the out, same. I'm running out of precious time. Mr. O'Neill. How do the goals of our foreign adversaries align with the goals of radical environmental nonprofits regarding natural resources and environmental policy? Well, there's serious concern about as the United States moves away from focusing on drilling oil and gas, that other other company other countries, specifically Russia, will be able to influence more of the market by producing their own oil and gas. This is a nas national s security concern as well as an economic concern for American Thank you. Taxpayers. You know, Mr. Chairman, I was just on the coast last week of Louisiana. Uh, we were out on the oil platform. The Gulf of Mexico can produce 15% of this national nation's energy right now today. It also, they do it 80% more efficient than our adversaries across the world do it in the Middle East. We have an America last policy. You're exactly right, Mr. O'Neill. America last policy. And we have got 
three leases that are supposed to be going off annual here. We didn't get them last year. They have sat right over there in that witness stand and said they weren't going to do any this year or any next year. And on top of that, LNG, you're exactly right. We have an LNG company down there right now on the, on the coast of Louisiana that is almost ready to export LNG, but they can't get the permits finished from this administration. Why? Because they would rather us buy our gas and oil from our adversaries who are out there funding people that want to kill us. And we also have Europe over there that is going to be forced to buy LNG from Russia because we won't fund or at least permit private companies in this country to export LNG. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. I thank